channel. Hey everyone, so we haven't actually had one of these sit down discussion videos in quite a while. I thought that with E3 finishing, well actually it finished quite a bit ago, uh, it is time to talk about one game in particular. If you know my channel, you probably know which one I mean. Let's go ahead and discuss Elden Ring a little bit. So for anyone not caught up, Elden Ring is going to be the latest From Software game. Probably going to be releasing, uh, I think they're shooting for March 2020. So in a little less than a year, we will have Elden Ring with us. At E3, we got basically a pre-rendered trailer that honestly did not show much. Now, unfortunately, because of YouTube's extra strict copyright system, which has been going on lately, I cannot show any of the trailer because I'm too afraid I will get copyrighted. However, we can discuss some of the details that have popped up about the game, because we don't actually know much. Uh, they were very scant on the details. We know the outline of what the game is going to be about, but of course we don't know any of the gameplay details, haven't seen any of the gameplay, haven't even seen screenshots of the game, so I will do what I can to give you kind of my initial impressions and where I think this game will be heading. Of course, the big selling point here is George R. R. Martin, hugely popular, Game of Thrones, everybody knows him. I think, honestly though, the George R. R. Martin part of this game is basically just like an extra marketing selling point. I'm sure he contributed. I'm sure he contributed quite a bit. Uh, Miyazaki, there have been interviews with him, and he basically said that George R. R. Martin, he did not actually write the main story and instead of that he wrote the kind of lore of the game which is going to be very interesting. I mean, uh, Souls game lore, even the more kind of direct story related Souls games like Bloodborne and uh, Sekiro have a very distinct style to their lore and I'm sure it will be noticeable that the normal uh, Souls writers did not write the lore for this game. However, I think in terms of style, George R. R. Martin certainly fits. I mean, just to give an example, outside of Game of Thrones, there have been like several compilation books to Game of Thrones. There was especially one, I think, it's called The World of Ice and Fire, where Martin wrote some of the like little lore tidbits on some of the locations. And that one is quite good, so... In terms of writing backstory, I think he's very good and this game should have an interesting lore system to it, kind of mythology, because even Game of Thrones has a very interesting mythology outside of even what the show explores from what I've heard. Of course, I haven't read the books, but from what I've heard, you know, it has kind of similar themes of like, uh, you know, duality, light and dark, ice and fire and all that, similar to what a Souls game would have. So I think... Yeah, sure, it's a selling point, but I think the lore of this game will be great. Now, talking about the gameplay, uh, this is going to be the big thing where Elden Ring is going to differ. Uh, instead of it being sort of a semi-open world game, I mean, I would classify Dark Souls games as uh, semi-open world, with some being more linear, <coughs> Dark Souls 3, than others. This game, contrary to those games, is going to be fully open world. By that, it's not going to be just like, you know, uh, here are four pads and you get to choose where you go. Instead, it's going to be proper, I don't know if you're going to have like a horse or something, but proper like go anywhere you want. I would assume it's gonna be, if it's going to be open world, there would need to be some sort of like quick travel mechanic. I don't mean a teleport, but I mean something to get around on. And yeah, basically you can go anywhere you want. In terms of choice, I think that's very interesting. Uh, because lately, you know, the Souls games, outside of the main series, I'm talking about uh, games such as Bloodborne and Sekiro, have been kind of getting more narrow. I mean, Bloodborne pretty much takes place in one city and its outskirts, Sekiro pretty much takes place in one city and its outskirts, and even though you can go around, you know, and explore however you want, it still feels like you are kind of in a small part of a larger world. With the actual proper open world, I think with the actual proper open world, it will offer a really good opportunity to really give freedom to the players. I mean, 
People love freedom about Souls games. You can play however you want. If you're good, you can like sequence break the entire game. You can go to much earlier parts than you're meant to. Like speed running is a big part. And I think an open world game will really lend credibility to that. Really give people uh, the freedom of choice, which I think was lacking in both Dark Souls 3 and in Sekiro. Now, of course, in Sekiro, the lack of choice was intentional because of how the game was kind of structured. I feel like in Dark Souls 3, it wasn't exactly intended. But I think in terms of overall fan feedback, they're definitely building from Dark Souls 3. I mean, I mean, with Sekiro, we knew what we were getting, but I think Dark Souls 3 is the big one that people had complaints about. It's a game that I have complaints about. It just simply feels way too linear. And now we actually have the opposite. The question that people immediately asked when details came out that this game was going to be open world is can From Software handle making an open world? And I don't see why not. I mean, the structure is already there. As I said, the earlier Souls games tend to be very open. So it's just like, you know, making a bigger world. One thing that's going to be interesting is fitting that into the gameplay of Dark Souls because what I'm thinking about is how are enemies going to be throughout the game world? So if you're like going between two dungeons, are there going to be like random enemies? Is the game going to be empty like Shadow of the Colossus or something? That I don't know. Because they pretty much confirmed, there was an interview with Miyazaki, and they said that they are not going to have towns or villages. So yeah, that's going to be interesting. Like not a lot of open world games uh, really take away the towns and villages, mainly, most of them stick to it. I mean, Shadow of the Colossus is the big one I can think of, but what he said exactly is that there will be dark dungeons and ruins like that you have come to expect from us. Creating a more open game is a big challenge for us. If we were to add towns on top of that, it would become a bit too much, so we decided to create an open world style game focused on what we are best at. First of all, that kind of reassures me and it's a bit of a concern as well. First of all, it reassures me because it confirms that they know what they're good at. Uh, honestly, as much as we meme about and love some of the Souls NPCs, a la Solaire and, you know, Patches and a lot, a lot of the other ones, outside of like their limited setting, would they actually make good characters if you were like, you know, in an open world town setting? Probably not. I don't think they have any of the depth that an actual proper, you know, like NPC has in a more in a more story driven game like The Witcher or something like that. So it's good that they know that they should stick away from NPCs. I mean, just look at Soul's facial animation, although to be fair, Sekiro was a huge improvement. And of course, the whole town feel would be a little bit weird. Of course, there will still be NPCs a la, you know, merchants and probably someone to level you up and all that. But other than that, it's mainly going to be dungeons. And I think the dungeons is where the real meat of the game is going to be. So my question is, my concern is, is the game world going to feel a little bit too sparse and a little bit too empty outside of the dungeons? Uh, because, you know, there's no point in adding an open world just to have an open world. And, you know, that's my concern. Like, without NPCs, without towns, who knows how the enemies will be? Uh, is it not going to feel too empty? Sure, the empty atmosphere can work. Hell, it worked with Shadow of the Colossus, but you need, like, really, really good level design for that. And I think if anyone's going to pull it off, I think it's going to be from what I would really like to see, honestly, I think with the open world, it, there's a perfect opportunity to add some of these like larger bosses. Uh, just imagine if you were like going along in the plane, you wander into an area in Elden Ring where you're not supposed to be, and just like some giant ass dragon or some creature comes crawling out. Those are the moments that would really kind of highlight why this game would deserve an open world. And honestly, I think From can pull it off if they give it their all. I'm really hoping that this game will go, you know, a Bloodborne direction instead of a Dark Souls 3 direction. I know a lot of people like Dark Souls 3. I like Dark Souls 3, but I don't know, man. It had some strange gameplay choices. Like uh, they were going back on some of the 
issues that they have previously corrected. So hopefully they learn, they pull all their experience together, even from Sekiro, because hell, I enjoy Sekiro a lot. You're seeing it right now on screen. I think the gameplay is super fun. The combat, while restrictive, is super fun. So hopefully they are going to pull together all their experience and truly make this game like great. I mean, I'd love an open game to be successful. I love open games. I love FromSoft games. This is probably going to be a dream for speedrunners. So yeah, no reason to be overly pessimistic. I'm excited. Last thing to mention is what the combat system will be like. Basically, at this point, we don't know anything. Uh, from the trailer, we see big armors, big weapons, big monsters and all that. So it could go either way. Lately, From has really kind of been loving the super fast, super dodgy, well, except for Sekiro, but the super fast combat system. And honestly, we discussed this on stream yesterday. People kind of gave me shit for it, but I genuinely wouldn't mind going back to a slower, more methodical... Uh, combat system like Dark Souls 2. Sure, Dark Souls 2 has its faults, but the faults lie with other aspects of it. I think the combat system is actually very fun, and it can be improved, and it can be made into a, like a great methodical tactical combat system. Although, I truly believe that this game will be fast as well. And who knows? Again, we don't know much. That's the thing I wanted to emphasize. I made like this a uh, 10 minute video on this game without basically knowing anything. We've got some little details, again, a pre-rendered trailer. So yeah, it's like, we can only guess. We can only guess until more info starts rolling out. Uh, one thing I'm not sure about, I don't know. I mentioned at the beginning about this 2020 release date. Of course, it's not confirmed, I think, but taking how, you know, past Souls games have released and the fact that, you know, a lot of the current consoles are getting towards the end of their lifespan, I don't think they could extend it too much beyond uh, March slash April of next year. But of course, I think as things will go along, we will get more pieces of info. I'm really waiting for the first gameplay trailer, you know, that's the, that's always the exciting part. Although, you know, we've been burned before in the past with the Dark Souls 2 gameplay trailers, which... Did not really end up reflecting the final game, but, you know, that's another topic. Uh, in terms of Elden Ring, I think that's pretty much all I got to say. It really does sound like Dark Souls, but open, which I'm down with. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. What do you guys think about Elden Rings? Did I miss any info? Uh, what do you think? Are you hyped? Or are you just going to say, fuck it, I don't want a George R. R. Martin game? It's not even a George R.R. Martin game, I'm only kidding, but there's sure gonna be, hopefully, if we go by R.R. Martin trends, a lot of tits and drinking as Game of Thrones. I'm only joking, of course. We don't want, like, God of War-style minigames. So, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that, and I'll see all of you next time. In fact, tomorrow I will be streaming more Bloodborne, so hope to see you guys there as well. Thanks for watching, and peace out.